Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 10. Let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient grace hairs of the aged. Let our strength be the law of justice, for that which is feeble is found to be worth nothing. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rukaha, Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now, more so than ever, the 144,000. And the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathen that looks like the heathen, the Israelite foreigners. This is not a black thing. And to the few aquaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone coming at you another lesson in truth. This video will be for critical race historical facts. You cannot make, you cannot make theory out of factual history. And then try to deny the truth thereof. Hamas has said that it doesn't have 40 Israeli hostages who are being requested as part of a temporary ceasefire deal that's being hammered out. They say they don't have enough hostages to meet the criteria for release. Now, this admission does raise questions about how many hostages they do have on October, uh, from October 7th still being held. Israel says that it's 129 hostages yet to be released. Meanwhile, President Biden came down hard on Israel in his sit-down interview with Univision last night. Let's watch. I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approval. I think it's outrageous that those four or three vehicles were hit by the drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore. It wasn't like there was a convoy moving there, et cetera. So I, what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks total access to all food and medicine going into the country. Now, now many media figures on both sides of the aisle are voicing their anger at Israel's actions and the slow response from the United States. First, let's listen to what Jon Stewart had to say on his show this week. See, this is where Israel's action get interesting, because you might say Israel's war is different than Ukraine's. Israel's responding to an attack and a hostage crisis. But in the midst of that, they pulled a little something in the way. Insiders, both former Israeli IDF and rabbis and many others are saying this was an inside job. Which some receipts will be provided to prove that statement coming up in the next video. West Bank on March 22nd, that might be notable. That's not even Gaza, that's the West Bank. So you can't say it has anything to do with defending yourself against Hamas. Let's see if America upholds its rule against taking land. It will not, because what you have to understand is that, as a matter of fact, let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 2 and 1. For the ungodly said reasoning within themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious. And in the death of a man there is no remedy. Neither were there any known to have returned from the grave. So these people are completely opposite of everything that's written. Especially the Israelis. Remember the, the Israeli Judaism worshippers. All right. Well, can't say that for every Jew, Jew, Israeli. But those of them who are involved in Judaism, all right? The Ju Judaism is a religion which follows the Talmud, which is in direct conflict with the Bible, which is in direct conflict with Christianity. Keep that in mind, all right? The Talmud is, is against who they call Jesus, is against Christianity, 100%. And they're all about themselves, which is why they they have you Americans bankrolling them 
this the look the state of Israel is, is a big welfare state that that's a, it's a it's the a colonizing welfare state that commits genocide when it feels like it and Americans are paying for it that is the brutal truth that is not anti any damn thing no anti semantics here all right cuz they love to throw that word around whenever you point out any facts that shine a light on them in a in a in a way that they don't want to be seen all right it says, I'm jump down to verse six. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments and let no foul flower of the spring pass us by. Let us crown ourselves with rose buds before they be withered. Let us go up without uh, let none of us go without his part of voluptuous uh, of our voluptuousness let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place for this is our portion and our lot is this let us oppress the poor righteous man let us spare let us not spare the widow nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age so if you're in their way if you're sitting on what they want the widows will die the babies will die. The ancient gray haired will die. And then when they die and, and they're unarmed and they're not combatants, they'll say, well, we're doing an investigation. He was referring there to, of course, an unprecedentedly large land grab in the West Bank, which is a clear violation of international law. Here's a little bit more from Jon Stewart. Why do we tiptoe around on eggshells? They slap America in the face and our response is, well, if anyone slapped us in the face, it'd be concerning, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, raising a hand to a delicate body part of the face. If true. <laughs> The verbal gymnastics that the American government must undertake so as not to offend the delicate sensibilities of a country we provide most of the weapons for is... Yeah! All right, and making some strange bedfellows, Tucker Carlson also weighed in on the conflict as well, critical of the United States' position. Let's take a listen. And you may be asking yourself, well, wait a second. If Christian leaders won't stand up for the lives of Christians, why have them in the first place? And that's probably a good question. So you would think that in Congress, there, where there are many self-professed Christians, somebody might be piping up on behalf of uh, their brethren in the Holy Land, but no. Their brethren, remember, Christianity is in direct conflict to Judaism. So what brethren are they talking about? What they're talking about is the fact that they're all Edomites. They're Edom. That's what it comes down to. And Amalek is the head house of that. And that happens to be the Israelis. And Tucker Carlson is just a regular, normal Edomite from the house, house of Edom. So he has to support Edom. He understands that Amalek is, has been put in a position that's over him. All right. And if you're Edomite and you don't get down with with Amalek, all right, then you're going to just have to lay down with the rest of them. It's, that's the way they roll. That's what's happening. That's what's going on. So this guy, you know, you know, with this this notion as if America is this good Christian nation and Christians should stand up. Well, let's let them speak. Just the opposite, in fact. For example, at a town hall event last month, Michigan Congressman Tim Wahlberg, a former evangelical pastor, said he would like to see the region treated like Hiroshima was treated. Watch this. <laughs> we shouldn't be spending a dime on humanitarian aid. I agree. It should be like Nakasagi and Hiroshima. Wow. To be clear, as a theological matter, Christianity is not the religion of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's the religion among all world religions that uniquely abhors mass killing. That is a goddamn lie. Christianity became the leader of the Western world, the whole modern world, through rape, rob, slaughter, murder, land grab, land theft, and forced conversions, the complete total opposite of everything that Tucker Carlson just said. All right. Uh, Ecclesiasticus, or so this book of Sirach 10 and 8, because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated 
from one people to another. Unrighteous dealings, murder, rape, war, robbery, disease. Over 500 million natives were exterminated out of North America. God only knows how many in South America. Over 100 million so-called Negro slaves perished just on a trip over to the Americas in that 400 plus year period. They wiped out the island of Tasmania. How do you think they got Australia? They took over the part of Asia that you call Europe. All right. Uh, um, Vladimir Putin provided you the receipts and the evidence that it was not white people ruling there after the fall of Rome. All right. These people are not the royalty. They became the new royalty. Let's, let's change gears here. All right. I haven't watched this video. This is just a short of my man, Cody Merrill. You know, we agree on some things disagree on others but we completely agree on who the cards are are and the world knows and in the cards are themselves and knows they just want to deny it even though the evidence is overwhelming exactly who they are so I came trying to find the scripture. Let this play while I look for it. Wake up, Americans. You're about to be pulled into a war with Arabs, with the Muslim world. Well, that made that easy. <laughs> about to be pulled into a war with the Muslim world. And you absolutely, because the actions of, of, the, uh, of the staged event on October 7th has basically brought almost the entire Arab world, Muslim world together. All right? Because you got Muslims that are not Arabs and they, and they almost brought the whole, like them Chechens and supposedly two Chechens were, were uh, surveilling a, a, a army colonel's uh, home and he ended up shooting and killing one of them right here in America. And those Chechens walk right across the border because of the failed policy of your current president and his administration. All right? So you're not safe here at home with the with this, you know, cars are rule over you. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah. The water you held by Shemel Shah went straight to it. This is a uh, second address. Uh, 15 and 28 and it reads behold an horrible vision and an appearance therefore from the east well for the nations of the dragons of Arabia shall come out with many chariots so the chariots being tanks drones planes right bombs troops and the multitude of them shall be carried as the wind upon the earth that all they which hear them may fear and terrible and tremble. Also, the Carmenians, raging in wrath, shall go forth as a wild boars of the wood, and with great power they shall shall they come and join the battle with them, and they shall waste a portion of the land of the Assyrians. They get ready to go to war in the valley of Jehoshaphat, and they're going to annihilate Amalek. It's prophecy, and you know. And you know the the J double O's are the are the the least of the flock that's drawing everyone into this, all right? The Carmenians happen to be the modern day Iranians. Hey, digging this child out of the rubble. The child is holding the phone. That's that's that child right there. The president also knows what Israel wants, Israel gets. To act otherwise is political suicide. And that's true because who even remembers Ted Pike have heard from him? 
as he spoke up about the JOOs. The mass media, founded and controlled primarily by Jews, manipulates the spigot of information out of which Heartland America drinks. Exactly, and I was, I was, I was in the Marine Corps. What's when, happening in America's this, And then when that happened, and then as soon as he said that the, the spigot of information is controlled by them, this piece of comes on and, and gives a controlled narrative that they just keep drowning you with. An open faucet, that spigot, all right, of, of anti-semantics just will not shut off. College campuses is horrific. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over leading universities. And majority of those protests were, were peaceful until the agent provocateur showed up. They call for the annihilation of Israel. It's unconscionable. It has to be stopped. It has to be condemned and condemned unequivocally. Israel is probably the most advanced surveillance state. Receipt. Evidence receipt. In the world. And the Gaza border is probably the most heavily surveilled. I know all these things firsthand because I served on the Gaza border. Do you know how long it takes an attack helicopter to get activated and blow up any one of those tractors or pickup trucks? Less than five minutes. Wow. It could have been a matter of five minutes before the whole thing was upended. I'm sorry, that's an inside job. It has to be an inside job. Rabbi Yusuf says a mass attack has to be an inside job. Most people of Israel believe October 7th happened from the inside. Deuteronomy 33 and 29. Happy, happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by Yahweh, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency, and thy enemy shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. cannot be that they broke the fence in 15 places and broke in and nobody responded not one bullet was shot america now has a zionist occupied government where less than two percent of the american population which are jewish occupy 85 percent of senior cabinet and secretary positions in government and it is not anti-semantics to point this fact out but yet when you do you could be blackballed blacklisted, even deleted. Call Halal Yahweh. Well, you know what? Let me read this scripture. Deuteronomy 33 and 29. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by Yahweh, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency. And thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham, Kaha Kodash, Kwam Yasharala, Abad Babal.